Good day and thank you for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to look at how lexicography can be defined or redefined from a communicative perspective. The motivation for my paper is threefold. Number one, one might get the impression that lexicography has trouble identifying itself when one looks at some of the recent literature on the identity of lexicography. Number two, there have been at least one, but also more calls for lexicography to adapt to the rapid evolution of the fifth and fourth, uh, fourth and fifth uh, industrial revolutions. And thirdly, uh, the theory of lexicographical communication uh, po uh, proposes or uh, provides at least a framework for a sensible redefinition of lexicography within uh, its paradigm. And I'm going to look at those three aspects and then come up hopefully with a, a good uh, redefinition or definition of lexicography. So firstly, does lexicography has, have trouble defining itself? If one looks at some of the recent literature, uh, especially perhaps from Lexicos, the uh, lexicographic journal, uh, some articles there from 2012, like what is lexicography by Bergenholz and Goes? What is a dictionary by Bergenholz? Who can really be called a lexicographer by Goes? And some others. One sees, uh, if one reads those articles, sees that there are many different opinions on what lexicography is and what dictionaries are. And that is by no means, uh, that it's by no means just a simple issue of agreeing on that, even if we are talking about lexicographers. Uh, whose job it is, after all, to uh, traditionally or typically to define uh, words and terms. So this might seem a bit ironic in a sense. So what is lexicography then? If we look at uh, traditional literature and uh, the broad literature, and even if we look at dictionaries, then generally lexicography is defined as the discipline dealing with the study, planning, and compilation of dictionaries. And in, uh, so what we have here is then an implication relation. If you have lexicography, then you have dictionaries. Uh, lexicography is a practice that is aimed at producing dictionaries. So the implication relation is very strong. And this is also the conclusion of Bergenholz in 2012, that lexicography has everything to do with studying, planning, and making dictionaries. If we fast forward to 2018, and we uh, cite from the Routledge Handbook of Lexicography, we find a different picture. So the picture has changed since 2012. Here we have Fuertes Oliveira saying, lexicography is the science concerned with the theory and practice of dictionaries. That is dictionaries, encyclopedias, uh, lexica, glossaries, vocabularies, terminological knowledge bases, and other information tools covering areas of knowledge and its corresponding language. In other words, reference and information tools dealing with, dealing with things, facts, and language. And uh, Tart says in the same publication that lexicography is the discipline that deals with dictionaries and other reference works designed to be consulted in order to retrieve information. Now, of course, I have to add that these definitions come primarily from the function theory perspective of lexicography, and they are not necessarily agreed to or shared by all uh, scholars of lexicography. But I'm going to focus on, on the function theory for the sake of contrast when it comes to defining lexicography and dictionaries uh, later on. So uh, the original traditional implication relation of lexicography means dictionaries, which was uh, even within the function theory, uh, still valid in 2012, has changed at least to now be, uh, if you have lexicography, you have reference works, meaning that lexicography has everything to do with studying, planning, and making reference works of which dictionaries are actually uh, only one type. So if we look at this symbol and it re represents the set of dictionaries that exist, uh, then we draw a circle to indicate the set of reference works. And so dictionaries um, represent only a subset of the reference works that exist. And that is the domain of uh, the function theory then, 
looking at reference works of which dictionaries represent only one type. So thirdly, then, there has been also a call for lexicography to adapt. And if not, then uh, it's, in a, it's in an existential crisis, at least. So TARP again says, basically, uh, in 2019, lexicographers have two options in the long run. Either they accept that their profession comprises far more than the compilation of dictionaries, or they will have to prepare a farewell party for lexicography as a millennial cultural practice because their own work is increasingly presented in forms different from the traditional dictionary. Yertar refers to things like, like lexicographical databases underlying tools such as writing assistants and other uh, apps and so on that work within uh, bigger apps where you, have, uh, where you don't see the traditional dictionary or even an online dictionary but rather uh, databases that work, uh, that do the lexicographical work, so to speak. Right, so, and then the TLC, the theory of lexicographical communication as a approach or an angle to redefine lexicography uh, in this new environment. Firstly, quickly about the theory of lexicographical communication, uh, the two basic tenets of the TLC are number one, in essence, lexicography is an exercise in human communication. And number two, this communication is indirect and mediated by text. So these two basic principles or tenets of uh, the theory of lexicographic communication as implications for the definition of lexicography. And these implications are the following, number one, Lexicography has to be defined firstly as a type of communicative activity, instead of in terms of a particular set of artifacts produced as media for this communication. And secondly, uh, the concept of text is integral, but secondary in a definition of lexicography as such. Nevertheless, the term text should be defined and the way in which lexicographical communication is mediated by text should be described. This assumes the definition and description of types of lexicographical text. So what is lexicography then from a TLC perspective? If we go back to the origins of lexicography and also the etymology of the term, I can cite the rather uh, uh, simple explanation of that, which is very useful. Uh, the term lexicography is originally Greek and means writing about the lexicon, precisely what the scribes did. They produced lexicographical data or glosses addressed, in dif uh, addressed to difficult words, the glotta, that were later compiled into the glossaries that represent prototype dictionaries in the European tradition. Now, of course, here type refers to the scribes of around the fifth century before the Christian era who were copying manuscripts of the older authors and then found that it might be useful to include notes on some of the difficult words that the speech communities of their contemporary era would not understand. And that is where lexicography in the end com comes from. Um, also look at the entry on or the article of lexicography in the OED uh, for the etymology of um, lexicography. So, if we take this uh, as a point to depart from uh, the, the etymology of the term lexicography and how lexicography originated, and we stick with a little bit of a more traditional approach, but still a logical approach to defining lexicography, then we can come up with uh, a, a, a set of statements about uh, lexicography. So, Writing about the lexicon, which comes from the etymology of the word uh, lexicography, entails producing commentary about elements of a lexicon or lexica. A lexicon then uh, entails a repository of lexical elements of a language, where a language can be seen as a sign system consisting of a set of signs, words in general terms, and a code or a grammar, and these two then combine to form, for example, sentences with which we communicate uh, in uh, linguistic science systems. 
and a sign then, and in language terms, a word, uh, it stands for something else and has within the sign, sign system in which it functions certain paradigmatic, syntagmatic, and pragmatic uh, properties. So, uh, and this is all uh, from, the, from the semiotic perspective of uh, Sosor, of course. So lexicography then seems to be uh, the activity of providing or producing commentary on the paradigmatic, syntagmatic, and pragmatic properties of signs in a particular sign system, considering if we consider the etymology and the origins of uh, lexicography. So this is a bit of a more traditional approach. Uh, lexicography focuses on signs of a sign system, meaning that it deals with words and not with uh, the reference of words. So not with encyclopedic knowledge as much as with knowledge about the sign system in which the signs occur or are compared with. So from a TLC perspective, then lexicography can be defined as the scientific discipline dealing with the study, planning, and compilation of lexical commentary. Where we define lexical commentary as consisting of one or more lexicographic messages that state a particular sign or lexical item and identifies it as an element of a particular set of signs or lexicon belonging to a particular sign system, for example, English in case of a language, and all convey further information about that sign, like formal, paradigmatic, syntagmatic, and pragmatic properties of that sign within the sign system. So this means that uh, an important point to make here is that lexical commentary does not equate to lexicological commentary. Lexicological commentary can be a proper subset of lexical commentary, but uh, lexical commentary does not have to be linguistic commentary. Right, so this is a definition of lexicography as a communicative activity, right? Uh, working on lexical commentary, giving lexical commentary. Now, the second tenet of the TLC is that this lexical commentary then is, is communicated via text as medium. And therefore, we must have a look at uh, what is regarded as a text in the TLC. So here we can embrace text linguistics, which is a study which focuses on, the, on, on text as a communicative uh, uh, medium. And uh, I have adapted uh, a definition from text linguistics literature from Carstens uh, in his Afrikaans linguistics, who've studied over 84 definitions of the term text to come up with a definition which I've adapted a bit. And we can propose this one then, a text is a series of expressions, experience presented and accepted as a communicative unit by the participants involved. Now, I don't want to elaborate much more on on this one, because it is a complicated and a complex term, looking at different definitions from different uh, perspe perspectives and angles, one would probably never come to a, uh, a universally acceptable definition of text. However, uh, having text defined, we can now define lexicographic text. So a lexicographic text then is any text with the primary objective to communicate lexical commentary. So uh, when we work with text as a medium to communicate lexical commentary, then from the text linguistic perspective, uh, which is a central uh, paradigm within the TLC, the notion of text includes the notion of the constitutive components of any text. And those are the seven components of cohesion, intentionality, acceptability, informativity, contextuality, intertextuality, and coherence. And it is in these components that variables relating to who is your target audience or user, what are you trying to achieve with this text, what are the functions of the text, what are the matter, and how are you presenting it, how are you structuring it, this is where these variables come to the fore and where they have to be considered and given values. When you are doing your lexicographic communication, 
and you are starting to mediating it through text, then these questions become very pertinent. And also, when you uh, evaluate lexicographic texts, then the regulative components of efficiency, effectiveness, and appropriateness come into play. I don't have the time, unfortunately, to elaborate on e each of these, but they are well covered in the text linguistic literature and also in the literature that exists to a certain extent on the TLC at the moment. So, uh, looking then at the implications of a TLC perspective and a redefinition of lexicography from a TLC perspective, uh, these uh, implications that you see here are the sort of traditional but also newer implications. Traditionally, lexicography as, is seen as implying or entailing dictionaries. More recently in the function theory, uh, lexicography entails reference works. And uh, in, for example, Vigan's general theory of lexicography, a lexicographic text entails a dictionary text, which is typically a dictionary article. Now, these implications are, uh, in a TLC perspective, not valid anymore, but rather they uh, should be replaced by the following. Uh, lexicography entails not dictionaries, but lexical commentary, firstly. Secondly, lexicographic text entails not a dictionary text, but any text primarily communicating lexical commentary. Thirdly, lexicographic texts are not necessarily dictionary texts, but dictionary texts, typically dictionary articles, are a proper subset of lexicographic texts. So then what is a dictionary? A dictionary can then simply be defined as a lexicographical reference work. That is to say, a reference work in which lexical commentary is communicated. Right, now let us try to apply uh, this definition of lexicography to a practical case, and I'm going uh, to uh, push it to the side of the TLC to contrast it a bit with, uh, with the function theory and see uh, to demonstrate exactly where the point of diversion, for example, is. So here we have an article from the concise Oxford thesaurus. And if you look at it, you can see that it is a, a normal thesaurus article giving a number of words that are semantically associated with the adjective nice, divided into uh, uh, usage or meaning senses, uh, each, uh, each numbered uh, and giving the words there. Right, so you have a number of words associated with nice uh, provided to you. And no one would disagree that this is in fact a dictionary article because it comes from a thesaurus and it deals with the science system of English as a language. Now, if we look at the following text, uh, this one has the same information. The information is a bit reduced. There's not so many of it, but this is extracted exactly from that article. But this doesn't look like a dictionary article. It doesn't look like the thesaurus article. In fact, this could be regarded as a design for a poster for a school classroom to help children to select better words than nice when they do writing. And here, color, color plays a role. Uh, uh, font size and even font type communicates certain information about, uh, the, uh, about what is presented. Now, from a TLC perspective, if you ask the question, so what is the difference between this text as a poster and the text coming from the thesaurus, then the answer would be, there's not much difference. Both texts communicate lexical commentary and therefore both texts, that is to say, the thesaurus article plus this classroom poster are both actually lexicographic texts. And that is the implication of the TLC, this definition of uh, lexicography. So where we have the function theory saying that dictionaries are a set or subset of reference works being the focus area of the function theory, the domain of the lexicography in, in, in the case of the TLC falls not only on dictionaries and not on all reference works, but on all lexicographic works. Uh, or texts rather, of which dictionaries is a subset, but also all other texts that communicate lexical commentary uh, primarily. 
So in conclusion then, any scientific discipline should constantly practice self-reflection and therefore the occasional redefinition of a discipline, especially in the face of a dramatically changing environment, is a natural consequence of its evolution. While innovation is almost always necessary, ultimately for the sake of survival, a discipline demonstrates that it has achieved a certain level of maturity if it does not need to reinvent and redefine itself, at least in the scientific sense, whenever circumstances change. Circumstances and technologies may change, but the mature discipline still does what it does, even while it adapts the ways in which it does so. Defining lexicography as the making of dictionaries could be compared to defining journalism as the publishing of newspapers. Certainly newspapers are a central medium through which journalism is practiced, but today it is by no means the only one. Development in societies and technologies have multiplied the types of journalistic media, yet today journalism still does what it does. So defining lexicography in terms of lexicographical communication, instead of in terms of the traditional artifacts that it produces, liberates it from the restrictions of a, of a single medium and rather places a spectrum of media at the service of lexicography. Certainly, dictionaries are a central medium through which lexicography is practiced, but it is and should by no means be the only one. When we define lexicography in this way, then disruptive technologies do not pose a threat to the discipline, but rather offer opportunities for exploration and exploitation. Thank you.